You're tuned to KOTA TV Rapid City, KDUH TV Scotts Bluff, KHSD Television Lee Deadwood, and KSGW TV Sheridan. Dakota Territory News, your 24-hour news source. Now, live from the heart of the Black Hills, Bill Knudsen, Sandra Cole, meteorologist Mike Modrick with weather, and Steve Sotak with sports. Now, Dakota Territory News Tonight. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sandra Cole. And I'm Bill Knutson. A tragedy to report tonight. A faulty furnace apparently is to blame for the deaths of 10 family members in Chicago tonight. Fire officials say that a couple and their eight children apparently died when the furnace circulated deadly gas through the home. The victims were discovered by a family friend. The friend said, we opened the windows and they were all dead. The bodies were discovered, scattered throughout the brick bungalow. A spokesman for the gas company said, that a spot weld and a flue pipe apparently yeah, gave way. He, he says a three-inch gap allowed the odorless, colorless gas to circulate throughout the home. For the first time ever, Custer High School will not have a baccalaureate service at graduation after complaints that it was mixing church and state. Tana Lockhart tells us while Custer schools are drawing an even finer line between church and state, one man is working to bring the two together. These third graders are learning the basics, reading, writing, arithmetic, and science. What they're not getting in class is prayer. That's what Reverend Frank Sheffer wants to change. He spends his time sending out these petitions, asking people to voice support for prayer in school. We should have the privilege to have prayer in school. I'm not specifically saying what type of prayer or anything like that, just that we have the privilege of having prayer back in school. Since April, Sheffer has gotten 300 petitions back, and he wants to get 500,000 to convince the President and Congress to change the Constitution. We plan on writing all the senators and representatives, letting them know at that time that we're taking these petitions to President Bush. The organized prayer that the Reverend is asking for is not allowed in the classroom. The Custer School Superintendent says once the children walk through these doors, they're not allowed to do any sort of group prayer, but they can pray on their own individual time as long as they don't influence other children. We have to practice uh, the separation of church and state until the courts and legislators change that for us. Uh, I do respect any citizen's right to uh, petition the public to get laws changed. Uh, this gentleman is entirely within his own right to do this. That's exactly what Sheffer plans on doing, to continue with the petitioning process. But until the Constitution is changed, children here in Custer and all across America will keep their religion virtually separate from their education. In Custer, Tana Lockhart, Coda Territory News Tonight. And Sheffer's petition drive comes at the same time that a Utah case is before the Supreme Court, wanting to eliminate prayer from school completely. Well, how high is the water? We'll check on that right after our first forecast, and here's Mike Modrick. I'll tell you what, it's still water down on the street. Nothing's melted. These are the 9 o'clock temperatures, and they haven't changed much since 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Gillette still at 49. This is a far cry from that bitter cold we were in just a few days ago, really, at the beginning part of the week. Gosture still at 48. Rapid City, 45. Sheridan, 43. But some of us may not even get into the 30s for low temperatures. That'll be nice. Well, obviously, it's a mild night, which is the first forecast. And we're going to have still some 40s over the weekend, uh, but actually we may see some 50s return even by Sunday. It's, we're going to stay very, very nice. We'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. Bill? Well, recent snowstorms in the Black Hills are expected to help the soil moisture, but the snow will not do much to fill the Pactola Reservoir. The reservoir is about 17 feet below normal. That is up from the 45 feet below normal. And uh, that is... Uh, the, below the normal no, level last wet, spring, the no, first snow is not nice, expected to raise yeah. the Pactola level. There hasn't been very much of it, and consequently, uh, when you ask, you know, what will this do to the level in Pactola, I have to say, well, I think most of the moisture in this snow will probably add to the groundwater, uh, uh, you know, possibly to soil moisture, but not much to groundwater recharge. And Reuter says that we need another snowfall like last spring to raise the level of Pactola Reservoir. 
Well, it seems to be sinking in today, the day after Magic Johnson announced that he would leave basketball because he has contracted the AIDS virus. Today, AIDS hotlines were flooded with phone calls. Dodge dealer has a special factory shipment of Dakota 4x4 club cabs in stock now. With our powerful new Magnum V8, these trucks have more power, more towing, and more payload than any Ford Chevy. Got it? Good. Basketball, because he has contracted the AIDS virus, the hotlines were flooded with phone calls. Disconnect here, we help you. In Wichita, Kansas, and all over the country, AIDS hotlines were inundated with calls today as the public scrambled to get more information about the virus infecting Magic Johnson. AIDS education nurse Renee Herman saw a bright side. Uh, more people are going to be aware that the disease is out there, and, and it can happen to anybody instead of just a specific group of people like has been thought in the past. AIDS activists, including Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California, seized the moment to call for more AIDS education and more AIDS research. Too many Americans have not thought enough about AIDS and HIV. Congress has not. The president has not. Certainly, President Bush has not, and President Reagan did not. President Bush in Rome said funding for AIDS research has increased dramatically, but he acknowledged shortcomings. I, I, I can't say I've done enough. Of course I have. But I, I don't like the allegation if it is that I don't care because I do very, very much. In schools all over the United States, Magic Johnson's youngest fans were getting lessons today about the HIV virus and how it is spread. How long do you think he's going to live? And in stores, there were indications that older fans had gotten the message as condom sales skyrocketed. The Lakers played tonight for the first time without Magic Johnson. Steve will have more on that a little later in sports. Fines and probation were the sentences for two former bar managers accused of embezzling. Nancy Bidlack pled no contest Definitely. and her husband Rod pled guilty to embezzlement from the Boot Hill nightclub in Gillette. The Bidlacks managed the Boot Hill for about 10 years, but were recently charged with stealing from the bar and restaurant. Rod Bidlack received a year and a half probation, a thousand dollar fine, and was ordered to pay restitution for an ice maker and a cigarette machine. Nancy will spend six months on probation and pay over a thousand dollars in fines. The prosecutor says he reached his goal in the case and thinks any further legal action will take place in civil court. A broadcasting here in the state lost one of its pioneers today. Helen Duhamel, the former chairman of the board and founder of KOTA radio and television, died this morning. <laughs> She was, by any measure, an extraordinary woman, a pioneer broadcaster mixed with an astute knowledge of the business world. Helen Duhamel bought KOTA radio in 1954, and then in May of 1955, she brought the first television station to western South Dakota. One of her first employees was country singer Buddy Meredith. One time, I, uh, during our television show, I tried to do commercials. So uh, it didn't pan out too well. So uh, when she called me in her office, she said, uh, well, we all can't be good at everything. And working with her and knowing her, she was a dynamic person, very powerful woman. And yet she had a heart as big as gold. One of the good things was you always knew where you stood with Helen. Had a question, go ahead and ask her. Got an answer, you knew where you stood, you know what it was. And that meant a lot. Uh, she liked to argue a little bit. And if you argued back with her, gosh, she loved that. And we had some good old arguments. And it always wound up with, well, now, honey, you know, things are going to get better. As an example of the kind of person Helen was, Harley Hansen was our sports director at the time. And Harley had a heart attack. And he was out of work for several months. And every week, Harley got his check. And uh, Helen was a very generous person and just a very sure fair boss. Fire me. And thanks to was when I found out that she was doing an awful lot of philanthropic work for an orphanage. And 
I was promotion director at the time, and I thought, by golly, I'm going to make a big thing out of this. So I took it to her. I said, this is what I've got in mind, Ellen. We should let people know about this. She looked at me, and she says, if you make one word of this public, you are fired. <laughs> Just like that. That was her own thing, and she didn't want people to know she did it. Mrs. Duhamel received numerous honors through the years. She was president of the South Dakota Broadcasting Association in 1961. She was the first woman in the United oh, States to be selected tired. as a state president. And she was also elected to uh, the South Dakota and now. to the Nebraska Broadcasting Halls of Fame. Because, uh, and she was nationally known as a broadcast work. leader and pioneer. I and visitation will be Sunday afternoon at the Osheim Catron Funeral Home here in Rapid City from 2 until 6, a rosary service at 5, and the Mass of Christian Burial will be Monday morning at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Cathedral at 10.30. Television. Helen Duhamel. Mrs. Duhamel died Friday. The funeral services were held this morning at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Cathedral. She has shown that in the truth of pioneer spirit, that a woman can be as successful as a man in the business world and yet carry out her responsibilities as wife and mother. Carrie Wickersham reports on funeral services for Helen Duhamel, the woman who brought television to the Black Hills. We gather as a community of family, relatives, and friends to celebrate the life of our beloved Helen Duhamel, wife, mother, and business person. Helen Duhamel was balancing a family and a thriving career before the term working mother was ever coined. She was a 90s woman, even in the 1930s. It was quite uncommon for there to be a woman involved in broadcasting, particularly at the level she was. Uh, she didn't necessarily think she was a pioneer, but she, uh, she forged ahead and uh, really made a path for many other women. In 1955, Helen Duhamel brought the first television station to the Black Hills, and she was already the major stockholder of KOTA Radio all while raising four children and maintaining her involvement in civic activities. Uh, I guess the thing I remember most of Mrs. Duhamel was that she was a very strong business person and weak people do not survive in business. She was very strong but so generous and deep in her heart. Friends of Duhamel say her foresight was amazing and in some ways she was years ahead of her time. She was able to bring television, for example, to western South Dakota when at the time uh, other people said uh, that's foolishness. No one comes to the Father except through me. After 86 years, Helen Duhamel's life was a full one, full of family and achievements. 
and her death is not only a loss to family and friends, but also to the Black Hills community that she helped to develop. Carrie Wickersham, KEVN Action News. The two row Gerald Nesbitt has more. A television show is dedicated to them, dinosaurs. We're all fascinated by them, and there's even been movies made about them. But, but here at the Rapid City Regional Airport, you can now see real evidence that dinosaurs were in Coda territory long ago. Estimates are that the rock are about 120 million years in age, and um, the tracks were made somewhere around that time. The imprints were found almost 50 years ago somewhere in the Hermosa area, and the rock they were in was taken to Custer State Park for folks to see there. Then, because the elements were taking their toll on the imprints, the rock was taken to the School of Mines and Technology for storage. Now, finally, they'll be on display here at the airport. All the years that they were in Custer State Park, people just loved coming in and looking at them and to think, you know, that, well, they actually were here. Although they look like large turkey tracks, they're really those of an adult and a baby carnivorous dinosaur. And even though no bones were ever found, the imprints really make you wonder just what the dinosaurs might have looked like. At the airport, Carol Nesbitt, Coda Territory News. And you can catch a glimpse of those prehistoric tracks by the ticket counters also out there at the airport. Oh, I'd like to see them. The Coda Sportsman had to the mountain. Dinosaur tracks embedded now on display at Rapid City Regional Airport. Carrie Wickersham has more. It's hard to imagine, but scientists say that centuries ago, dinosaurs roamed these hills. They know because the large animals left their tracks in pieces of stone. This particular piece of sandstone was found near Hermosa and excavated in the 1940s. The tracks are believed to be from some type of a carnivorous dinosaur. Um, they're not sure exactly what kind of dinosaur because the bones have never been found. It took these men almost an hour to unload the nearly 10-ton slab of rock and put it in its permanent resting place at Rapid City Regional Airport. Today is a great day. We're excited. Um, the School of Mines is, is going to be cleaning off the dinosaur tracks and there will also be a sign that tells a little bit about the tracks and the history on them. And For nearly 50 years, the dinosaur tracks were part of the visitor center in Custer Park. But since it was outside, the elements took their toll. But scientists are hoping the new location will play a part in preserving a piece of South Dakota's ancient history. I think it's going to really be something that Visitors to South Dakota and the Rapid City Airport can have a chance while they're mulling around the airport to learn a little bit about the, the area. And Carrie Wickersham, KEVN Action News. The snow is turning into slush. And when we come... Pacific Street Saloon. Best thing I've ever heard of. You wanting to marry a woman that you've never seen.